Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. They made a homemade explosive and then set it off on campus. Now four middle school students are under arrest. 10 News reporter Anthony Pera is at least East Lake Middle School. Police say the kids turned a plastic soda bottle into something very dangerous. Well, police say someone could have seriously been injured in this. Now, no one was hurt, but these kids obviously in big trouble tonight. By Thursday, parents at Eastlake Middle School knew all about the so-called explosive that went off on campus Wednesday. Police described the device as chemicals mixed into a soda bottle. Then it was shaken to explode, and it did. She heard it. It was like a big pop, like... Austin Park's sister goes to the middle school. Their dad isn't sure what to make of the soda bottle bomb. I've done that, I mean, and with Alka-Seltzer pills and, and things like that to get the, 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 the fizz going. And I mean, the kids are kids. But police say this device was dangerous. Someone could have been burned or cut when it went off. The bomb squad was called in to investigate. Four students confessed, all boys. They were arrested, then sent home to their parents. Police didn't think the kids did it to hurt anyone, and no one was, but it could have ended differently. And obviously, when that, you hear those things, you know, you just hope that everybody, everybody just tidies up a little bit. And it's all of our responsibility as parents. It's not just the school. And the district says that the students will be punished. They don't know what that punishment will be at this moment as they are still assessing the situation. We're reporting live tonight, Anthony Pura, 10 News. Anthony, thank you. And we are just days from the official start of winter. It certainly feels like it out there. Jen De La Cruz is tracking tonight's cold temperatures once again. Another cold one for tonight. We're going to see mainly 40s for the coastline, but not as bad as what we saw last night or the night before. Right now, we're already at 50 degrees in downtown San Diego, 41 in Oceanside, 42 in Julian, and upper 40s for Inland Valleys, 43 in Poway, 43 in El Cajon, but those will be dropping down to 44 in Carlsbad for tonight, 42 for Ramona, mid 40s in Alpine and Hamul, Chula Vista. You're looking at 46 degrees tonight, 30s for our mountains. So not as bad as the past two nights, but still chilly and chilly for tomorrow morning as well. Hour by hour on the coast, we're going to keep it in the 40s overnight under mostly clear skies. 7 o'clock, getting ready to head out the door for the morning commute. Still going to be cold out there. You're going to want an extra jacket. But tomorrow, we do see the 70s returning for our forecast highs on the coast and the valley. So enjoy it while it lasts. We have big changes on the way. I'm tracking a winter storm coming up in your 7-day forecast. Jen, thank you. To track the weather in your neighborhood, download the 10 News mobile app. There's a free version available in the App Store. Just search 10 News. Earlier on 10 News, we told you about a possible sex assault on the campus of High Tech High School in San Marcos. In the last 20 minutes, the Sheriff's Department told 10 News the alleged sex assault was unfounded and not a valid complaint. This was after a thorough several hour investigation. New details, police are still looking for the gunman who shot a person at an Oklahoma City mall. They say the incident was not an active shooter situation. Police say it started this afternoon when two people got into an argument at a shoe store. At some point, somebody pulled out a gun and shot the other person. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical but stable condition. Police are urging people to stay away from the mall as they continue to investigate. All right, the expected start date for this Senate trial to impeach President Trump is now in jeopardy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is facing criticism after she said she would hold off on sending the impeachment articles to the Senate. The move comes after Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell told reporters on Tuesday that he's, quote, not an impartial juror. They wrote the Constitution. Uh, they suspected that there could be a rogue president. I don't think they suspected that we could have a rogue president and a rogue leader in the Senate at the same time. The back and forth battle follows Wednesday's vote impeaching a president for the third time in U.S. history. President Trump is charged with abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Well, I don't feel like I'm being impeached because uh, it's a hoax. It's a setup. It's a horrible thing they did. They happened to have a small majority and they took that small majority and they forced people. It's not clear when Pelosi will hand over those articles to begin the Senate trial. Seven presidential hopefuls hitting the stage for the sixth Democratic primary debate in L.A. The debate coming just a day after the House voted to impeach President Trump, a topic that was at the top of tonight's agenda. ABC's Elena Gomez is in L.A. with the key points. 
The last Democratic primary debate of the year began as predicted. We need to restore the integrity of the presidency, of the office of the presidency. Reacting to President Trump's impeachment coming just one day before. If the president claims uh, that he is so innocent, then why doesn't he have all the president's men testify? But candidates quickly returning to those hot button issues they're hearing on the campaign trail, like the economy. It's where I live, folks aren't measuring the economy by how the Dow Jones is looking, they're measuring the economy by how they're doing. We've got a government that works great for those with money and doesn't work for much of anyone else. Climate change. The issue now is whether we save the planet for our children and our grandchildren. And America's role on the world stage. We see among our allies and among our adversaries, case after case, where the world is making plans on what to do, ignoring the United States because we're no longer considered reliable. And for Democrats, Thursday night was also about diversity. Seven candidates representing two women. Senator Warren, you would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. I'd like you to weigh in as well. Uh, I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. <laughs> and only one candidate of color, Andrew Yang. Why am I the lone candidate of color on this stage? You know what you need to donate to political campaigns? Disposable income. Yet all in agreement, their primary target remains the man currently the occupying the Oval Office. Only seven of the 15 Democratic candidates qualified for tonight's debate. Now several candidates are pushing the DNC to modify those restrictions for future debates. Elena Gomez, ABC News, Los Angeles. And Senator Bernie Sanders will be holding an immigration rally in San Ysidro tomorrow. It will start at 6 p.m. at the San Ysidro High School Athletic Quad. The address is right there on your screen. Uh, doors will open around 4.30 p.m. Tickets are not required. This is Senator Sanders' fourth public event in San Diego since kicking off his second presidential campaign this year. Details of a chilling murder at sea are unfolding tonight. The FBI arrested two people in Orange County in connection with the death of a man who was shot in the head. His body tossed overboard and found in the water off Oceanside. We woke up to flashbangs going off at five in the morning. You kind of think you know your neighbors around you. Um, you know, we say hi in the driveways and whatnot and friendly gesture, you know. But yeah, something coming out of the blue like that. Yeah, that's that's just crazy. Those neighbors reacting to this dramatic raid that went down this morning in Fountain Valley. Agents arrested a man and a woman. They say the male suspect took the victim out on a boat back in October and confronted him over a $40,000 debt. He then shot the victim and threw the body in the water, which was later discovered off the coast of Oceanside with weights tied around his feet. The alleged killer is charged with first degree murder. The victim hasn't been identified. The man accused of assaulting three women wearing Muslim headscarves in Little Italy is going to trial. Prosecutors call it a hate crime. They say that three women were on their way to brunch in early October. That's when they say that Kyle Allen approached them under some narrow scaffolding there. They say that he threw his shoulder into one of them, slapped another, and then ripped the hijab off the other's head. At one point, he did point at the three of us and was yelling, um, F you this, F you that, go back to where you came from. Allen's attorney said this was just a misunderstanding, called it an accident. He said that Allen was heavily intoxicated in the middle of the day and that he has been going to AA meetings. The next hearing is in January.